Hey guys, so today we're in James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, but I want to remind you, James here, just like a couple weeks ago, dealing with the issues of people wanting to be teachers for stature, reputation, clout, he's also dealing with something with people who think they're wise. And so it's really easy to think that you're wise, but you might not be. So let's take a look at that. James chapter 3, starting verse 13, says, Who among you is wise and understanding? By his good conduct, he should show that his works are done in the gentleness that comes from wisdom. But if you have bitterness and sel bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and deny the truth, which such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace-loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without pretense, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who cultivate peace. So let's jump into this. Starting off, James challenges everyone there with a question. He's not asking if everyone's wise so that he can then seek counsel from them. Instead, he's seeing who thinks they are wise in their own eyes. So imagine everyone raises their hand. It's like, who among you is wise? And I mean, at your age, I thought I was wise. There's this saying for normally parents tell adults is, you know, you should move out while you know everything. That saying is talking about how teenagers tend to think they know everything and tend to think they're wise. And guys, that can move on to adults. Adults are that way too. We can act like we know everything. Oh yeah, no. I... And why? Because either we're confused and think we actually know everything, or we're trying to get reputation out of it. Now, here, the by the way, the older you get, the more you realize you don't know as much. Trust me. But here, we need to focus on this wisdom. Understand that wisdom is having or prompted by accumulated knowledge. We need to make sure we know that because James explains how some here show that they have genuine knowledge or genuine wisdom and it comes from their actions and the motives in their actions those who have genuine wisdom act with the gentleness that comes from wisdom so their actions and their motives and how they handle themselves comes with a gentleness or humility because they have genuine wisdom from above and understand that they are a sinner that's been saved by grace and have this, this knowledge from God, this wisdom from God of who they are and their place amongst people and under God. Now, James calls out, though, the other people who don't have wisdom from above. He calls them out. He's like, wait, if your ambitions and the things that you have are your motives for the things you do are based off of bitter envy and selfish ambition. You don't have true wisdom. You're, you're actually, it says don't boast, right? He says don't boast and deny the truth. What he's saying is if you boast saying you have wisdom, you're denying the truth because you don't have true wisdom. Instead, what you have is worldly, unspiritual, and demonic wisdom. Think about it. Wisdom is this understand, is the accumulative, like we talked, or talked about, the having or prompted by accumulated knowledge. Well, worldly or demonic or unspiritual wisdom is wisdom that was born through experience in sin. A 40-year-old man will have a lot of earthly, worldly wisdom if he's not saved because he has a lot of experience being a sinner. So here, he shows that comparison. Someone with true wisdom from above, from God, has this gentleness and humility in his actions, how he carries himself, while other people who have this worldly, unspiritual, demonic wisdom act in bitter envy and selfish ambition. Now, we need to remember true wisdom does not come from earthly means, but comes from God above. Proverbs 2, verse 6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom... From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding, 
And if you remember when we went over James chapter 1, verse 5 says, Now if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. We know, and also verse 15 even touches on the fact that wisdom comes from above. God is the one who gives us wisdom and a self a correct self-image of ourselves, a correct understanding of who we are in the sight of God and amongst other people, that we're all sinners saved by grace, not by ourselves. We are nothing without Jesus, nothing without God. And he really breaks this down trying to show people the differences because wherever there's worldly wisdom, there is sin. Because verse 16 says, For where there is envy and selfish ambition, which are the driving forces of worldly wisdom, there is disorder and every evil practice. Whatever sin you've done in your life, guys, think about something you've done that's sinful in your life, and you're like, man, the ambitions behind those, you can find bitter envy or selfish ambitions anywhere driving you to cause that sin. Why do you steal? Because I want it. It's a selfish ambition. And so it's unfortunate, but it's born, it's worldly wisdom is born from sin. And these people want this, people to think, oh, I'm wise. Look at me. But the problem is they're wise in sin, not in God. So let's look at the traits, though, that James breaks down of true wisdom, wisdom from God, which starts off is pure. So it does not it's not corrupted by sin. It's not based off of sin. It's not experience in sin, but it's experience of God and understanding given to us from God. A right, accurate self-image. There's also peace-loving. So not purposely trying to cause strife or conflicts, not trying to fight with your brethren or other people when people didn't like disagree with you. You don't like, oh, how dare you and yell at them. But instead you're like, well, okay, okay, we disagree. I, I get it. You also have gentle, which is yielding and kind. You, this is very important. We need to be gentle. Compliant, so not stubborn or strong-headed. Guys, you're teenagers. You're gonna start being stubborn and just strong-headed. Work at that. Don't let that define you. Because the problem is, if you just continue to be stubborn and strong-headed through the rest of your life, it's just gonna get harder to stop. Trust me, I know. Um, full of mercy and good fruits. Mercy. We are, our true wisdom of mercy is because we understand that God first showed us mercy through Jesus. And therefore, we extend mercy to others who sin against us. And just sin in general because we know we are fallen sinners just like they were. The only difference is that we've accepted Jesus Christ. Also, good fruits. So your actions bear these good fruits. Good meaning good in the eyes of God. These fruits are righteous and the, the, basically the outcome of your actions, the, pro, the produce or the product of your actions are good. That's because you have true genuine wisdom. And these fruit that we do and the fruit of righteousness are sown in peace. It's something important, especially nowadays, that we need to notice. A lot of people are fighting and aggressive and tensions are high. People are mad at people just for the color of their skin or the way they vote. And that affects even you guys at your age in high school and junior high. You need to be the one to seek peace, using God's wisdom to seek peace and be able to stay gentle and calm why? Because in doing so, fruit of righteousness will be, will be sown from that, will be pro produced from being sown in peace. Meaning, if you have no bitter envy or selfish ambition in how you handle yourself with people, then you'll do good. Use true wisdom. So my question to you guys is, are you wise? Do you have earthly wisdom? Or do you have godly wisdom. And the more wisdom you need, trust me, we all need wisdom. Ask God, like James 1, 5 says. So stay safe and God bless.